everybody, Phil from No Code Ops here, uh, and I'm joined by two folks from Tonkin, uh, a no code process uh, orchestration platform. Super excited to have you both. Frank is the director of communications, uh, and Brett is the VP of product marketing. So, so great to have you both. Welcome. Uh, Thank you, Phil. Happy to be here. Yeah, so uh, I'm a huge fan of process orchestration and the ability to update it without developers. Um, I think it sits uh, as like a core need for business process uh, in general um, <laughs> because things change super fast and yep. developers have a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> so, <Absolutely>. um, <laughs> so yeah, um, so can uh, Brett, can you walk me through uh, like a situation that somebody would be in to achieve an aha moment in Tonkin? Um, yeah. Maybe some background on Tonkin as well. So, so Tonkin puts a lot of power in the hands of business operations teams. So you can think about sales operations and finance operations and legal operations, people who are thinking about process people and systems on a day-to-day -day basis, but may not have the development background or technical expertise to actually build and deliver solutions that make their processes more efficient. And so they end up relying on IT, right? The aha moment comes when you give them the power to do things that they never thought they could do before. And these are things like, orchestrating an end-to-end -end process for support, where there's multiple systems involved, like Intercom and Zendesk and uh, Slack, multiple different teams. And you have to do things like track statuses and auto respond to things and be able to um, augment tickets with conversations people are having behind the scenes. So like things that are human-centric, dynamic, and complex. Right. Once you could give the power in the hands of that support ops, or revenue operations person to build and orchestrate this process themselves, that's the aha moment. So uh, what I'm hearing is if this, then that logic won't solve every single support issue. <laughs> exactly right. If this, then that can solve a piece of a support sure. issue. But sure. the question is how do you actually orchestrate the entire end-to-end -end support issue process itself? Right. And, and I'm assuming monitor it as well. Or, or billion dollar question, if you will. Yeah, for sure. So do you want to hop into the product and show us an example of this type of workflow? Yeah, absolutely. So let me um, share my screen. Cool. So uh, this is Tonkin. Um, and we have this uh, uh, kind of, let me actually go here real quick. Um, so we have this construct of what is called a solution. And a solution is basically an end-to-end -end business process. And each solution is made up of multiple modules, which is a piece of that process, right? Mm -hmm. And so to go in on an example of what a module looks like, you basically have a entire component of a process here that is listening to a particular data source or system like Intercom. And from there, you can do a number of different complex or simple things, right? For example, you can do things like every time an intercom uh, conversation comes in and I want to escalate it, I'm going to create a ticket in Zendesk. That doesn't have to be manual anymore. That can be automated. I'm going to send a confirmation note back to intercom with that link to the Zendesk ticket so that tier one agent never has to leave intercom to actually link to the ticket itself. It knows exactly where to go. You can start to layer things like using natural language processing to analyze what the conversation is simple chatbot stuff, if you will, right? Where you can analyze that as a pricing conversation and respond with auto responses, et cetera, et cetera. And then from there, what's really cool about Tonkin um, is that you can start to add human-centric actions into the stream of this workflow. So for example, once this ticket gets escalated and maybe that tier two agent comes in, they're gonna have a conversation behind the scenes, maybe in Slack, maybe over email or some other chat um, kind of platform about yeah. the context of what this ticket is. And that conversation is completely outside of the stream of the ticket itself. And so you ideally want to append it to the Zendesk ticket that's created. So that's exactly what this particular thread is doing. Once it's posted, someone accepts it. And then every conversation that comes in, that ticket is updated in Zendesk, right? That's amazing. And so, and I'm assuming that like uh, you can even do things like, you know, if this is a new issue, um, uh, it can even update a wiki or something like that. So Exactly. Update a wiki. It could... It could update Salesforce, right? Because maybe um, that account team wants to know if a new ticket has been created that's associated with their account. Well, let's make that link as well. And let's maybe notify that sales team in an appropriate Slack channel that a new issue has been created. Or you can say, well, I don't want every issue to be escalated I only or alerted. I only want the high priority, the urgent issues, the red flags to be highlighted in Salesforce. And you can create the rules um, 
all using no code, right, for for the business teams to actually uh, to actually do that. And so, just as an example, like if I wanted to add another branch to this, yeah, launch, I'd love to see like how easy or complicated it is to yeah. make a change. Um, so you can uh, you can start. The thing with Tonkin is that these are all building blocks. Mm-hmm. Everything is simple, and then you string them together, and that's how you get to something that's complex, right? right. And so, for example. Um, I can add a new branch to this NLP. Uh, maybe um, in addition to monitoring pricing conversations, I want to monitor conversations that, uh, that mention sales, or I want a demo, or something to that effect, right? And so I'm adding keywords here to this additional if, NLP. Sorry, branch. really quick. If you're adding those keywords, because it's natural language processing, is yep. it also getting synonyms to those words and whatnot? Um, exactly. It's yeah, getting okay. synonyms. It's getting also misspellings. So things that... Right. So, the, the way we use it, it's, it's a matching thing. Uh, there's a percentage match and it's based on synonyms as well as uh, uh, typos and misspellings and things like that. And the closest match um, upon a threshold, which you can set, is going to go to this branch, right? Okay. And you can train this over time as well. And so from there, then I can start to add actions. Um, and these can be things like I want to update something. So I can go into Salesforce and maybe I want to update a opportunity record or an account record with additional notes, right, from uh, this particular thread, right? So that's an, uh, an update um, action to, to Salesforce. Um, and I can choose whatever information I want to add all based on fields or, uh, you know, information that I have context of in this particular module. Incredible. I can then go in and maybe ask a question or I can alert something. So I'm going to send a notification then to a Slack channel, and this could be a direct person, this could be a, an actual channel itself, right? It can be anything you want um, and basically send this information that says, well, there's a new uh, sales conversation coming in through Intercom. I am uh, updating and creating, uh, this actually probably should be a lead. I'm updating a lead in Salesforce, right? And sending a notification into a, a Slack channel uh, to say here, uh, there is a there is a new lead, right? And when you send that notification to Slack, can you also um, gather structured data back from Slack? So like, do you want this to evolve to this stage? Yes or no. And, or do you want to add context and then bring that data back in and take actions on it? That's exactly think, right. That's awesome. exactly right. So that's the exactly what right. some of the stuff is making it easy for the lay users who are not building it and orchestrating it. Right. Mm-hmm. So hundred percent, because at the end of the day, that's the job of the operations team is to make the work and the process easier for the teams that they're supporting. So exactly what you said, all I need to do is a toggle on this monitor thread messages. And for every new thread message now, I can take actions accordingly, right? Um, so uh, maybe if, if we want to see this in action, I can also give an example, but... Um, I think I think this is great. Like, uh, I think if you want to, if folks want to see more on this, uh, they'll be able to, you know, book some time to chat. Uh, with folks from Tonkin. Uh, I think this is incredible. Um, I do have one final question for you uh, yeah. on this front, throw you a winger. Uh, yeah, <laughs> get, buckle up. So, <laughs> my experience when it comes with no code operational um, orchestration pieces like this, right? Yeah. Is the builder has a ton of power, but with yep. the, like Spider Man, right? Like great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And the biggest drop off I see in terms of adoption or, or, you know, people on the ground getting confused is they don't understand when they, you know, uh, when they get a message in Slack or when they get that email or when they, you know, they don't, uh, or when they update that Salesforce field or whatever it is, when they're doing that manually, mm-hmm. they don't understand the implications of all of their actions yep. Um, yep. because they weren't the one who built the whole orchestration process. How does sure. Tonkin think about that? Uh, to make it not only work for the person building it, but also for the people using it day to day who didn't maybe necessarily have a hand in building it like a decentralized organization? Yeah. So, so great question. Cause I, cause I think there's a a number of things to unpack in there, right? One is the ideal structure of how you deploy something like a no code platform for the enterprise. And I think a common misconception is that no code for the enterprise means you don't need it involvement. And that's Mm -hmm. actually not the truth. You want to actually build a bridge between the IT teams or the biz tech teams and the operations teams that they support. And the way you do that is you allow IT to come in here to a platform like Tonkin, control who has access to what, permissions of who can do what, right? And also, by the way, um, for actions that are not out of the box with Tonkin, add more custom actions through APIs and definitions and things like that 
that can then be translated into a no-code component that the business team can then use, right? So you're building that in empowerment for IT. And on the business side for the operations team, that's where their day-to-day -day comes in, right? Um, for their relationship with the end user, with the salesperson, if I'm in sales ops, I am asking them, what is it that you need? What is it that you, you, you want? And then also making the decisions of what is the ramifications if I automate this piece, right? Of what impact it has for my system. So that power needs to also sit in the hands of that operations team who has the depth of knowledge on the process, the team and the systems themselves to make sure that whatever they build and deploy is not gonna overwhelm the system or is not going to do something that is unintentional. And that's also the, the beauty of this is that that power lays there, not necessarily in the hands of the end user person. Right, and I like, and just to kind of close loop on that, I, I think you said it really well early in the conversation that it's not only the technology, right? It's the people, the process and the technology. And I think that on the people side, uh, these ops folks, learning skills from product managers in terms of internal marketing, adoption, um, understanding, I think is going to go a huge way uh, yeah. in the world of no-code ops. So, Absolutely. so great talking uh, with you both. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to uh, to the bright, bright future of no-code business orchestration. Great. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and by the way, really happy that you're putting this newsletter and community together. I think no-code, low-code, this empowerment of, of business is only just starting um, and it's going to grow massively. So really excited to be part of this wave and part of this movement. Um, and yeah. happy to be here. Great, great chatting. I'll, with you. I'll echo that. Uh, looking forward to seeing how the community builds and, and hope people uh, who watch this will come visit us at, at Tonkin.com. Amazing. Well, thank you both so much. And uh, thanks for being an early adopter of No Code Ops. <laughs> thank you, Absolutely. Philip.